Well, if you're gonna buy the cheapest car in the USA, why not do it in style? Now, I should probably ban myself from going to collector car auctions because I have zero self-control, but I went there with good intentions. I was actually trying to sell the last two cars from my reality show. Some exciting news on that, but uh, still can't tell you. Air date is unknown at this point. Uh, and I had two cars left from that reality show that I wasn't keeping, and I needed to sell them, so I, I put them in the auction. And they sold. Good for me. But since I have zero self-control, I ended up bringing home two cars, so a push. I know, I, I know, it's pathetic. But how could you say no to the cheapest DeLorean in the USA? Now, I saw this car before the auction started and went, ooh, a DeLorean, but then I immediately dismissed it because it has an automatic transmission. Now, I've been casually shopping for DeLoreans over the past year or so, and even though I love the movie, I just can't geek out enough to spend $30,000, which is usually the cheapest running and driving one in the USA, with a manual transmission. Now, the manual transmission is pretty important to me because it makes the car a lot more fun to drive. It only has 130 horsepower, so having a three-speed automatic. And I also wasn't very encouraged by the fact that this car was being pulled by a golf cart up to the auction block. Normally, you drive the cars up to the auction block. They meander through inside the convention center up to the auction block, and... This one couldn't even go under its own power. So I really wasn't interested. I'm gonna do my best John DeLorean pose now. Oh yeah, that's the thumbnail, or, or the Back to the Future picture. But anyway, there are some good things going for this car. The first one is the story. Now apparently the previous owner had two of these cars, one really nice low mileage one, and then this one, which has 56,000 miles or so, but this was his driver. He got really old. Apparently at 88 years old, they took his driver's license away and he had to sell the cars. Pretty good story. The other thing this car has going for it is the condition. Despite it having higher than average miles for a DeLorean, usually people didn't drive these all that much, the body is in excellent condition. That's really important because this stainless steel body can't really be touched up. If you get a dent, you can't put Bondo on it and repaint it because this is bare naked metal. Still, I wasn't interested because it was a non-runner and I expected it to bring a lot of money because DeLoreans are really expensive. But when it started up on the auction block, just out of the blue, and then drove up to the auction to be sold, I was really surprised. It sounded just fine. And then when the bidding started stalling out around $11,000, I was even more surprised. So I happened to just be up there because I had just lost an auction on a 76 Cadillac Eldorado convertible. My mission was to buy a land yacht up there, but when this thing was at $11,000, the next bid for $12,000, of, of course I was in. Then I was quickly outbid. Somebody threw up $13,000, and then it came back to me for $14,000. I, of course, raised my hand again, and the car was quickly sold to me for $14,000 for a DeLorean. Great Scott. Honestly, I expected the reserve to be much higher, but when the auctioneer banged the gavel, I had just bought the cheapest DeLorean in the USA, and totally by mistake. I, I had no intention of doing it. Now, I think I might have been shielded a little bit on this auction. A lot of people don't know that the auctioneers often will do a fake bidder across the room. You may be the only person bidding. There's no one bidding against you because they're trying to get you up to the reserve. I mean, I can't complain that much. $14,000 is still dirt cheap for this car, but I had spent maybe 30 seconds or a minute glancing it over before it went across the block. So I really had no idea what I had. But thankfully, the second look was pretty promising, especially on the inside. Ooh, it's nice. So all in all, not bad in here. The leather seats are nicely worn, but still nice. The dash isn't all wrinkled up, and everything's here. The gauges look nice, the climate controls, got a CD player. I was pretty impressed. Now there are the standard DeLorean gripes, like the weak door struts. This one does pretty well, but the passenger one I have propped up with a hammer handle. And then this headliner is sagging down into my head. But overall, $14,000 for a DeLorean that started up and ran across the block. And in the back, the engine bay seemed pretty good as well. Let's take a look. It seemed like I lucked out with the engine as well because everything's there. Looks like it's old and been sitting for a while based on the belts, but 
really nothing scary in here. There's one fluid leak that I noticed around the coolant expansion tank area, but everything else looks nice and tidy. I was really impressed. I was super excited since it started, ran and drove to take it out on the mean streets of Kansas City that night, but uh, unfortunately I was in for quite a rude disappointment. So while I was taking care of the paperwork and writing a check for my new DeLorean, my friend Bob was also there and he was working on getting this car outside, outside the convention center and out onto the streets for me. He started it up and I got a little agitated while I was taking care of the paperwork because I could hear him revving the bejesus out of the motor, but it turns out this was for good reason. I guess when the engine warmed up and all the fluid started circulating, the transmission wasn't working. It just barely would go into gear and would crawl and slip in, slip out, basically undrivable. Major bummer, the transmission was toast. So there was no driving it that night. I had to have it shipped back to Wichita, Kansas, 200 miles away, and immediately I took it to a transmission shop. Now they were able to drop the pan, clean out the filter, put the pan back on in the filter and put fluid in it at the right level, and the car actually drove. Amazing, it drove, but he said the transmission did need a rebuild. There were a lot of parts, clutches and things. There's a long delay when it goes into drive and it does still seem to slip a little bit. So good news, bad news, or, or bad news, bad news. Because there was more bad news, he couldn't really address the transmission issue for two reasons. Number one, he couldn't find a rebuild kit. Now, if you look online, you can buy seals for the valve body and all that, but you can't find the clutches and the plates. Now, this drivetrain setup is out of a Renault or a Peugeot or Volvo, and the transmission is shared with a lot of those French and Swedish cars along with camper vans for some reason, but you can't find the rebuild parts for it. I really could use your help with this because I can't rebuild this transmission without these parts, so maybe they're out there somewhere. If I can't find them, then I have to find a used transmission, which would be about $3,000, or a new old stock transmission, which is $5,000. Now, the second reason why he couldn't really troubleshoot the transmission is because of the new issue we discovered now that the car drives. So driving this thing isn't very much fun right now, in addition to a really long delay when it goes into the gear, uh, it also has a stalling issue. So I'm pulling out in traffic right now. If I were to give it too much gas, it'll just stall out as it did right there. It just completely stalled. So I have to be really, really light on the gas. I have no idea what that noise is. in order to not kill it. Like almost no throttle at all when I accelerate. And if I do give it too much throttle, I'll stall right in the middle of the road. Now, once I do get enough speed, it does seem like it can save itself. So I floor it, but then it stalls and it comes back. And it'll do this all day long. Why well, I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. And the tires are ruined, severely flat spotted and old, so this thing shakes like crazy. Brakes don't feel all that good either. God, that's a terrible noise. Oh, stalled out. Right in the middle of the road. Come on. God, this is just like the movie. You were always in the movies wondering like why would this thing stall? at all the worst times, but that's a DeLorean. There we go. Okay. All right, we're moving. So that about sums it up on my new to me cheap DeLorean. Now, if this were a normal car with normal parts availability, I would be able to fix it really quick, really easily assuming that engine cut out things an easy problem to find and then be back on the road. But this is a DeLorean. They only made it for a few years and the parts availability may be a little scary and expensive. So 
we'll see how this goes. I certainly wasn't looking for another project. We've got the M5 to deal with, but a DeLorean for $14,000 plus fees plus shipping. I I'm really excited. Thank you for watching.